Hello, today we're going to be talking about a mod showcase on the Zara's SCP mod. Now I'm a class C person now, does this going to be going around looking at all these SCPs? Now the first one we're going to be looking at is SCP-1499, the gas mask. Now whenever you place this one on your head, it will transport you to another dimension. I don't want to actually put it on, otherwise it would send me to the dimension and that's going to be hard to get out. Although taking it off can take can get you out of the dimension. Next up we have is the Obsidian Absorber, SCP-402, which absorbs liquids and creates force. The next SCP is my favorite of this mod, which is the Paranoia Inducing Glasses, SCP-215, which does a really cool effect where it makes everything kind of blur, similar to the SCP mod, SCP game. Next we have is the Diacillus bracelet. I don't know if I said that correctly, but what it does is it gives you resistance too whenever you have it in your hand. Next we have is the Eternal Flame, SCP-310, which sets you on fire whenever you wield it. Whenever you right click with it, it also sends out a fire. I'm just gonna place this back in, set myself out in a little bit. Okay, so next up we have is the Rubber Ducky, SCP-1356. Now you might have noticed how many SCPs there are, you might want to go onto the wiki to actually see them yourself. SCP-248, also known as 1010%, can be added onto any sword, well, almost any sword that isn't modded, to make it better. Next we have is SCP-860, which, when you, when using the correct one, will send you to a different dimension. Next we have a Zero Gi Wiz Moon Rocks, which gives you instances of the Moon ro of Moon Rocks, each doing different things whenever used. Now I won't be using SCP-860 because it sends you to a different dimension. This is the... that was the hungry clay. It doesn't do much. Now the key doesn't normally work if you have the wrong one. There are two in the mod, one can be gotten from creative and one by crafting. Let's move this up. Next we have is this spoon that bends people, and whenever wielded in survival mode, it will insta-kill you, although now I have to place it back in. Well, at least it's just the first death. Okay, next up we have is... Uh... Throw that away. That's the fork. SCP 14 J. Why would this door even have an opening? Okay. So, next up we have is the Circle of Protection. SCP 1038. This gives you regeneration and withering. So it isn't that great. Next we have is the Broken Desert, SCP-132. It's basically just a bit of a desert. Next up we have is Green Goo. It upgrades things when they're thrown in. We have is the Gender Switcher, SCP-113, which I would expect since I'm I have an Alex game I would change into a Steve. 
Next we have is the Jade Ring, SCP-17014, which makes you slow but really resistant. Next we have is an unidentified muffin creature, SCP-7-J, which is definitely not just a muffin. Next we have is... Uh, eh, I'll just do the rest of this later. Oh, some video on it's, it's fine. Oh wait. Um, so that was a uh, procrastination stone. Next we have is the nerfing gun, SCP-3108. Whenever shot, using one of its instances, if you have any, not like me right now, will change blocks to dirt and any mob to a zombie. Next we have is SCP-1689, an infinite sack of potatoes. Which, when gone into, sends you to a world completely made out of potatoes. So it just gives potatoes whenever you break anything. So whatever you break, whatever you do, it just gives you more potatoes. Maybe get a night vision goggle on. And... That's really it. That's the entire dimension, just made of potatoes. Get out of here. Okay, moving swiftly on from that potato sack. Next we have is a Stendler's Nightmare, if, I'm, if I said that correctly, 1074, which when clicked will send you to another dimension. Next we have is the Architect, which when put into a room will expand it, although I haven't seen this properly in the mod. Next up we have is the Carnivorous Chocolate Fountain, or the Chocolate Fountain, which when clicked will spawn a bug. Uh, real funny guys, he took away the button. That's... Mm. Okay. Anyway, next on we have is SCP-12-AR. S-L-A. I don't properly know this one due to I not knowing the S-L-A's or the other versions. Next. This is SCP-2200, 287, and 345. When you click 345, it gives you each bit of stone and a bucket of lava. Whenever you use 2200, it will send them to Soulsville. Well, it would actually just delete the mob, but well, it sends them to Soulsville. Clark's favorite sword will strike lightning and does 8 damage to anything you hit it on. And again, I don't actually remember what the SLA SCP-12 does exactly. Moving swiftly on, we have is Floodlights. That's about it. Hmm. Now we have is the Duplicator Tree, SCP-38. This isn't actually how it looks like, I just did it in the position of the Orspawn Duplicator Tree. Here we have is Mr. Fish, the Invisible Woman, Miss Sweet, and the Peripheral Jumper, all the mobs of this like, mod. And here's the unseen mold. You can't see it. And if you go into a bathroom here, we will have the Buck Ghost. SCP-789-J. 
He's a good guy. I'm showing. Next we have is, I can't remember what this one is. Uh, don't know why there would be two do Oh right, it's SCP-055. Whenever you look at it, you'll forget about it after a few moments, due to it being a mematic effect. Wait, why am I here? Okay, that's odd. So, next up we have is... Huh. The other things needed a key card. Well, next up we have is a bad composition, SCP-12. Whenever you go into it, you instantly die. Now there's a level 5 key card here. So, there's a few documents here. And the last SCP in this mod is SCP-001, the sheaf of papers, which is a pile of papers, which is one of the 001 proposals, as mentioned in the first video. And so, that's about it for this episode today. Next video, we will be explaining the survival side of the Zara's SCP mod, and going in depth on the crafting recipes on what and how to craft each one. That's about it. Bye.